Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance. And his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep. Becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to depart from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents then, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elisha. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them. They became frightened as he entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, there was Jesus found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. As we gather this morning, what we do every Sunday morning, to come into this house of worship. We're mindful today, once again, the face of hatred, to once again raise its ugly head in the horrific acts of violence that took place in New Zealand a few days ago. Whether it's at AME Church and South Carolina, a Baptist church or a synagogue or mosque. It's somebody's house of worship. And we as Catholic folk in this place today, we offer our prayers to those who continue to be threatened to worship as they choose. But also, we must also act to find ways to eradicate the hatred, the racism, and all other isms that divide the human family. Church, there's one God. There's one God. And we had divided that up. And so we pray today and ask for God to give us the resolve that we need in our tradition to be more faithful to build bridges of understanding as opposed to walls of hatred and division. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Let us pray and ask for God's blessings upon the words preached this morning. Oh, loving God, we just thank you this morning. It's so good for us to be here. And as we come this morning to worship, give us, Lord, open ears, open minds, open hearts, What's been proclaimed today might be preached as you desire, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, let the church say, Amen. 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 I'm not sure how many of you like to go to the movies. You are a movie person. My sister loves going to the movies. She prides herself by saying, I've seen every movie nominated for Best Picture her poor husband, who goes out to all these movies with her. But if you are a movie person, especially recently, I'm quite sure you heard about the movie Green Book. Green Book. In fact, it won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Green Book. A story that talks about an accomplished, talented African-American man, the concert pianist, Dr. Shirley. And this ride to the deep south with his driver, 
Tony Litt. And what seems like very different people in their lives and experiences, they find themselves together in various spaces. And in many ways, they both help each other out on their journey. I saw Green Book, and many parts of it I liked, and many parts of it I did not like, to be honest. But I don't think the movie did full justice for what the Green Book was. So much so that I actually purchased a Green Book. Y'all hear me? And although it obviously predates me, it's a listing of safe spaces for black people to go to sleep over in hotels, to find a place for a meal, to get their hair cut, or other places of human social needs that were not always given to them in our country. It's basically a directory of safe spaces. It actually was started up north. The place you could go right here in Philadelphia, where you could go as a black person and find your dignity, your life. I'm not preaching today a history lesson, but I am going to talk about the Green Book today. And the reason why I bring it up today is because the Green Book understood properly is a tremendous effort and exercise of collaboration, community, and commitment. Collaboration, community, and commitment to each other. I wonder, I just wonder, could we do a Green Book today? And the reason why is because some of us, you see, in order to be in the Green Book, you had to share what you had going on and put it together in a codified way that somebody else could be blessed. Many times we get so caught up, that's just mine. You can't have it. I'm not going to share my stuff with you. This talks about collaboration, community, and commitment. You all with me so far? You see, on this second Sunday of Lent, the church always goes to the transfiguration. Every second Sunday, and there's a reason why the church does that. Pope St. Leo the Great says that the reason why one of it is the church is getting some strength and some support because it's hard out there trying to be a Christian. Or oh, maybe for you, you got this thing down. But for some of us, it's hard out there trying to be faithful to Christ. It's hard out there saying the words, turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. It's hard out there walking these walk, this walk in Christian fidelity. So why does the church give us transfiguration as our text this Sunday? Luke chapter 9. It's because, as we heard in Philippians 3, our citizenship is in heaven. Our home is in heaven. We're trying to get to heaven. We want to have a seat in heaven. Oh, we live in this world, and we ought. We try to have a life nice life in this world, and we should. But guess what? You can't take it with you. Old folks would say nobody goes to the cemetery in a U-Haul truck. And sometimes before the repast is over, folks been fighting about your stuff. You can't take it with you. But we can take a life well lived in the gospel, in our home in heaven. That's why we live in this world, but we don't know the time, do we? It might be the long walk of cancer. 
to see somebody we love so dearly. Within months, perhaps, diminish and slowly just pass on. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Or it might come like that. Within hours, he's gone. You don't know. That's why you got to be ready. Prayed up. Choosing your battles. Because some battles, the preacher said last Sunday, ain't worth fighting for. I ain't give you that much energy. Some battles, church, just ain't worth fighting for. But I know one there is. It's my seat in the kingdom of heaven. That's my... You see, I may not be on road number one, but I want to have my seat in the kingdom of heaven. I want to live my life where God knows my name. You see, the, the word says our citizens, but to get there, oh, to get there. Sometimes it's not easy. And so we do need collaboration, spiritual collaboration. We do need spiritual community church and commitment to Christ. Where is he going with this today, Father? Well, you see, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John. Community. He could have had a one-to-one -one conversation, revelation, each one separately, but he brings a group a church, a community together to show them it's worth it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, but it's worth it. You keep on walking. Because God has something for you the world can't give you and the world can't take from you. And notice their experience of glory is when Jesus in conversation with Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, Old Testament and New Testament come together, showing a collection of glory together, community on the other side, talking about what? Your exodus. It's going to hurt? Yeah. Folks going to sell you out? Yeah. You're going to die? Yeah, but guess what? It's in the Father's plan. I will raise you up on the last day. I will raise you up. Because just when they thought it was over and the devil just started to laugh and high-five his minions, God said, guess what? It ain't over. So I say it's over. And on that third day, he rolled from the dead. That's what this season's all about, walking the walk to glory, walking that walk. Even when we fall and stumble, as I do, as you do, as we all do, what did he do? He got back up. 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 He got back up and kept on walking because he knew his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. You see, church, as we walk these days of Lenten journey, oh, it sounds nice, Ash Wednesday. Get your ashes, right? Got my makeup on, my Christian makeup, and I keep on walking. See you next week. No. Palm Sunday, maybe. Easter, certainly Easter. I got to show up my clothes. But now, some 10, 11 days into it, it's not easy. 
I'm not just talking about giving up something. I'm going to give up chocolate. You should. <laughs> Diabetes, cholesterol, overweight. I'm going to stop drinking. You should. <laughs> you know I'm right, church. Amen. Yeah. Father Thorne, I stopped drinking. You lying. <laughs> In church. But maybe you need to stop altogether for your health, for your own spirituality. So many of us are fake, giving up stuff. Take on something. I ain't reading the whole Gospel of Luke. He got to be crazy. That's nothing. Nothing. Pastor said, read the Gospel of Luke. I ain't doing that. But you have no problem watching the soap opera. No problem watching Family Feud, anybody else you watch. You'll spend three, four hours watching the game. And let's not go there with the game. You play on video. But the time we spend on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, little outage for 40 minutes, the whole world. There's no Facebook for 40 minutes. Maybe God is saying to you, pick up the Bible. Maybe God is saying to you, talk to someone. How many times we go to restaurants and mom, dad, all on their phones? And we wonder why. This mental health issue in our community. As little ones, we put a screen in their face and wonder why can't God, folks can't talk and communicate to each other. We wonder why? Let's talk about more than simply all those things. What do we take it on? I want to suggest today, whatever we take on, we do so in community. What if we said, I'm going to read a few chapters, you read a few chapters, and let's talk about it. Let's call it community. What if we call someone and said, what time are you going to church? I'll meet you there. That's community. What if we really began to ask people those spiritual questions? I know you, you, you're, you're trying to change your life around, but I know it's hard. How are you making with that? Not to be newsy but a real, honest, holy sense of community. Y'all with me? Today is part two of our assembly. And I invite you all to come down the hall after mass and talk about stewardship. Stewardship is church. Once again, you're going to hit us for money. No, I'm not. But I'm going to talk about what it means to be church and what it means to be on a journey together. You can stay home and pray. But it's something about coming together. I can read the readings myself, but it's something about somebody reading them for me. That I can listen to a song on my, my iPod, whatever it may be, but there's something when somebody says and sings a song that touches my heart. I can stay home and pray, but when I come together and meet somebody on the journey, and no, I'm not alone. Oh, I might fall, but I keep getting up. I I'm not alone on my journey. It's not easy out there, Lord, but guess what? I'm not alone on my journey. I got somebody watching over me, helping me out spiritually. That's what it means to be church. Not a club, a church that's rooted in Christ, the solid rock I stand all on the ground. Is sinking sand. I stand on the rock of Jesus. But I don't stand alone. Because my God brought Peter, James, and John up there. And I saw on that mountain a taste of glory. And I keep on keeping on. 
I may not be what I used to be. I'm here. I'm here. Because you know, why should I feel discouraged? Why should those old shadows come? Why should I be lonely and long for heaven's home? Because Jesus is my portion. My constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Can I get it? One, two, anybody else? He watches over? Anybody else? He watches over? I got a few more seats. Who else does God watch over today? He watches over me. I keep on keeping on. In the name of Jesus.